Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today, we're test driving the 2025 Subaru Forester Sport. Restyled inside and out and a lot of new upgrades to talk about. All right, my friends, we are going to keep our walk around pretty brief today because it's 102 degrees outside already at 9 a.m. in the morning here in Phoenix, and I don't want to bake to death before your eyes. The 2025 Forester has been completely restyled inside and out. The platform itself, the mechanicals are essentially a carryover, but it's been given a complete reskin and an update on the styling. So as you can see, there's a lot of little differences that really make it look quite a bit different than the last generation. And this being the Sport, this is the mid-grade, sort of right in the middle between the base model and the fully loaded Touring. As tested, this one prices out at $37,000 and some change. It does have the option package on it with a number of things. What I like about the new styling here, I'll just point those things out. It's got squared off sort of octagonal design wheel arches, which are new for this year. I think it's a nice touch. It definitely gives it sort of a sense of freshness. Wheels on this one are 19 inch now on the Sport. And instead of the red theme that they went with the striping and the accents previously, this now has bronze accents along the lower rockers, the wheels, and a number of other areas. I really think they give the vehicle a little bit more of an upscale look. The greenhouse, very similar to before. It's a very tall greenhouse. Subaru's have always had sort of a low car like bottom end and then sort of a really tall greenhouse very similar to a gremlin from the 70s although that's not necessarily a flattering comparison same idea though a lot of outward visibility here with the 2025 forester the grill design and finish changes quite a bit from the base level all the way up to the touring here we have black grill with blacked out headlight look and led headlights here led fog lights one thing I do have to point out though, this grill and the face that's on this new one, while I like the design actually better than previously, it kind of has the same vibe as the last generation Ford Explorer, just a little bit. I'm not saying it's a copy, it just, it sort of lends itself to that same look, especially around the headlights where they wrap into the fenders. Having a look at the roof, this does have standard roof rails so that you can attach all manner of accessories and this one does have the big, large sunroof. Not a full panoramic roof, but a larger than standard power sunroof. Looking at the rear three quarter view, you can see this is one of the big styling differences here for 2025. The shape of that window has a little bit different cant to it. And then there's a nice little emblem here in this case with the bronze accents. Looking at the rear, this does have a power hatch and on this one, the foot operated radar control so that you can, in addition to the buttons inside the key fob, you can wave your foot underneath the bottom of the back of this thing and it's going to open up great if you've got an armful of stuff at the big box store. LED taillights at the back. Looking at the lower bumper, you can also see bronze accents continue down there. And on one side, you've got the exhaust pipe sticking out. The other side, you don't. I kind of like my symmetry. I wish they'd either have no exhaust pipe sticking out either one of those things, or they'd have two. It's like, I, it's a picture I want to try to straighten. For 2025, the interior of the Subaru Forester got a bit of a refresh. And that means that while it looks just like a Subaru inside, they've given it the latest Subaru dash design. But even more important than that, They've really upgraded the trims and a lot of the comforts in here. Look at the dash. It's got a nice padded soft stitch piece across the front in front of the passenger. And the door panels have this beautiful two-tone treatment. It's actually a three-tone treatment with a nice canvas cloth and some soft vinyl and the copper accents that go along with this color combination for me really, really work. These seats, these are what Subaru calls StarTex. Now, the first couple of days I drove this car, I actually thought I was sitting on leather. And I, I sat in here and I'm thinking, wow, this is really soft, sumptuous leather. Very nice. It's one of the nicest interiors I've been in in a Subaru in a long time. And then I find out when I read the specs that this is actually vinyl, that there is leather in the uh, top two trim grades, but not here in the Sport. So impressive impressive i'm i'm usually a pretty good judge of these things and when i think i'm sitting on leather and i'm really not i feel kind of like a doofus but it says a lot about the StarTex. 
They're comfortable, they're beautiful. They do have heated seats here. The steering wheel itself is leather covered. It has paddle shifters on it for the transmission. And ahead of me is a little bit more of a traditional instrument cluster than a lot of cars have now. It is two analog dials and a small digital center screen. Nothing wrong with that, it works well. And if you've been in Subarus, it's going to look very familiar. But over here is what's completely new, an 11.6 inch portrait style infotainment system. And we'll talk a little bit more about that separately. Below that, lots of ports for plugging in. Down here, a place to put your phone. And this one does have a wireless charger. I like the way that's designed. A traditional gear shift lever behind that. Cup holders down low and storage inside the center console almost exactly the same size as a square tissue box a good level of storage in there but no ports inside of that above me is a pretty large sunroof we saw that on the walk around it opens manually Ooh, you can see i have light now and it's uh power operated for the actual glass the rear seat is actually very roomy i've been very happy with these and there's a lot of amenities back there that i expect at this price vents on the back of the center console power charging ports as well the seat itself does have a fold down armrest now it does fold down in a 60 40 split for a nearly flat load floor and it's a pretty easy operation to do that's always a good thing the rear cargo area has a nice liner on the floor a nice big plastic rubber liner so that you can throw all your camping and your gear in there and not worry about messing up carpet and it says forester on it a very nice touch i'll note that that's an accessory on a lot of vehicles back there you also see the subwoofer for the audio system that this vehicle has this also has a nice big roll shade to cover that up and hide it. Underneath that floor, down deep underneath, you're going to find that this does have a temporary spare. Always a good thing on a crossover or an SUV. This is an interior that I'm very pleased with. It has a good level of amenities for this price point. And I'm just most impressed by the design and the quality of the materials. As I said, this is the nicest Subaru interior I think I've ever sat in. And I'm not even in the nicest one. So I'm very impressed. I like it. This interior gets five out of five stars. The infotainment system here is the Starlink 11.6 inch portrait style touchscreen. It is not entirely fully featured, but it's pretty close to the top. This does feature the Harman Kardon audio system, 576 watts, 11 speakers, AM, FM, Sirius XM radio. It has Bluetooth connectivity, of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, those are wireless. Using the system I have found is very easy. The menu layouts are very intuitive and finding your way through this, learning it, not a big deal. Climate controls are integrated into it. You can press a button there and it brings up the climate controls for detail. The basic climate controls are found at the bottom, the fan on off and the temperature controls are actually found on hard controls on the side so you don't have to dig through menus to get to your most used things and that includes the volume and the tuning knob so i like the fact that they've given us those hard controls here in addition to the touch screen now there are a few things that this does not have this does not have a 360 degree view monitor it's just a simple single view backup camera it also in this particular trim does not have navigation but I'm looking at the price tag. I'm looking at what competitors give us for this price tag, and we're almost there. It's a great system. I've liked it in other Subarus that I've tested, and it's essentially the same you're going to find in other Subarus. This system gets four and a half out of five stars. What's under the hood of the Subaru Forester is what's under the hood of most all Subarus. This is the Boxer four-cylinder engine, and this is one that's been around for a while. It's essentially carryover from last year which means it's well proven. 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, and it's an H4, as I mentioned, a boxer engine, it's horizontally opposed. And this continues to be mated to an electronic CVT, continuously variable transmission. 180 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque. And the fuel economy ratings are there on your graphic. Now, if you watch my videos, you know the question I always like to ask, is how does it go? So I'm going to come to a complete stop. And well, of course, out here in the middle of nowhere, I wouldn't do this in the city, at least not very much, and go. It's moving. It's a CVT. You can hear it. And 60. 
So CVTs, you don't have a shifting gear sensation because it's not shifting gears ever. Although this does have paddle shifters here and with the sport mode, it does give you some ability to sort of play with it and pretend like you're shifting gears. It gives you simulated shifts, but they're not real shifts. It's as good as a CVT has gotten. So if you want that feeling of having some control, you can play with it and have that. But at the end of the day, it's best to just leave it be and let it do its thing. And while CVTs aren't my favorite kind of transmission, this is one of the better ones on the market. It's pretty unobtrusive and the thing doesn't drone on like you just heard unless you do what I just did, which is floor it and hold your foot to the floor. If you do that, you're gonna get the leaf blower effect. Power, it's 180 horsepower, isn't the most, but it is comparable with a lot of its contemporary peers out there in the marketplace. So it's not over or underpowered, it's class average. Fuel economy, this week I got about 23 average. This is not the most impressive powertrain, but it's certainly not a disappointment. This powertrain gets four out of five stars. Out here on my favorite back road, I've found so far that the ride is actually quieter than I remember. And that's one of the things that Subaru told me was that they've increased the quietness of this interior, probably by adding more sound deadening, but sometimes when they stiffen the chassis and do some other seam work with adhesives and things like that, it can all contribute. On our 70 mile an hour road test, this comes in at 57.6 decibels, which is on quite the lower side of average so it is a pretty quiet ride and drive in here and even out here on this road which has a noisy pavement I find that it's pretty hushed wind noise pretty low even though this is kind of a big brick of a car now Subarus have always had the benefit of a low center of gravity because of this boxer engine that sits down low in the chassis and because of that handling even though this is a taller SUV isn't quite as top heavy feeling as you get with a lot of its counterparts and our visibility the feeling you feel like you're sitting on a car rather than in an SUV and that might be appealing to some maybe not for others the payoff though is when you throw this thing into a corner it does handle a little bit more like a car than a big heavy SUV steering has a nice feel this has a new dual pinion electric power steering rack which means there's a motor driving one side and your steering is directly connected to the other side which gives you better steering feel than a lot of the power steering systems out there and because this does have the 19 inch wheels and the nice tires why it tends to be better for the street that was a cattle guard so on the pavement around town, I found this to be a very comfortable daily driver and over speed humps and speed bumps, the suspension doesn't get unsettled like it does in some vehicles. But the big test, of course, is the desert washboard road. Out here, this rhythmic vibrating surface is a great way to see how well bolted together this is. And Subarus have not always performed out here super, super good. While they're marketed to us as being these off-road SUVs, Generally speaking, they tend to behave more like cars out here. Not all, but some have been less than what I would call solid and, and feeling like they're really built like an SUV. But this one, in spite of its low profile tires, woo, came around that corner a little quick and uh, got a little slide there. Where was I? In spite of these low profile tires, which are really for the street, these larger wheels, the ride out here is actually quite civilized and I'm not getting any vibration through the steering or the suspension. It feels pretty well bolted together. And as we saw back there, the stability control on this really allows for the system to step in and arrest a slide. And so that's one of the things that you know we like in modern cars is you cannot be perfect or you can be in a slippery situation. And while it doesn't completely overcome the laws of physics, these systems can go a long way to saving your bacon. And one of the things I point out is because this does have street tires on it, they're not quite as grabbing of this gravel road as maybe something of a more off-road tire. But nonetheless, I'm very impressed with the entire package. This chassis gives four and a half out of five stars. Wrapping it up for the 2025 Forester, this is a car that I'm pretty impressed with the changes that they've made, particularly with this interior. As I said, when we were sitting inside and checking that out, this is one of the nicest Subaru interiors I think I've ever sat in. 
and this isn't even the nicest version of this with real leather seats. I am pretty impressed with these vinyl StarTech seats. I thought it was leather until I read the information and it told me otherwise. Very supple leather nonetheless. But the stylistic changes, very evolutionary, particularly with this bronze. I think it looks more upscale. The drive and the living with it experience, very much the same as people have come to expect for Subaru. It's got some ruggedness to it. It's well made and it's got lots of nooks and crannies designed for the active lifestyle. So it's got everything that it always had before, plus just a little bit more of an upscale flavor, I'd say. That's really where it's at for the 2025 Forester. So looking at value with this price mid-grade, I think we're pretty much right on the money, if I'm honest. It's not too much. Um, it, cars could always cost less, right? But when I look at quality, the warranty, all of the things we talked about, I put value here at four and a half stars. When you put that in with the entire scope of our conversation, we're at four and a half stars for the review. Very good, very good. So uh, there you have it, the 2025 Subaru Forester. If you'd like to see more of what we do, please subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. If you're not ready to commit to that yet, you can just see our latest video right there. Either way, stay tuned.